Hey all here, OS Reviews. Today we're taking a revisited review of the iPad Air 2 here in 2023. This is a tablet that debuted in October of 2014, making it now approaching nine years old. Time really does fly. So earlier this year, we actually did a throwback review on the iPad Mini 4, which is in a very similar situation in terms of software support, even though it debuted in 2015, it has a comparable processor and also upgrades up to iPad OS 15 as its last operating system, just like the Air 2. So we get a pretty similar experience, to be honest, but just in a larger frame. If you do want a bigger tablet, that is, a more conventional 9.7-inch screen versus the 7.9-inch panel on the iPad Mini. Granted, there are a few differences, one of them being that the processor is technically the Apple A8X versus the A8 found on the Mini. So the X variant is technically a three-core processor versus dual-core on the regular variant. Benchmarks aren't super far apart, but an extra core should mean that you just get a little bit more horsepower on more computationally intensive tasks, although the GPU is exactly the same. It also comes with two gigabytes of RAM, which, although quite low by 2023 standards, on an iOS product actually seems reasonably optimized. Obviously, a larger frame also comes with a bigger battery. This one's sitting at 7,340 milliamp hours. When it was new, it was rated for around 10 hours of screen on time. These days, though, as apps become more power intensive and also the battery will degrade over time, you'll expect something closer to maybe six to seven hours on a used model. Just like the Mini 4, the screen here is 2K resolution, what Apple calls Retina, and it's fully laminated, which was a first on an iPad of its time, meaning there is no gap between the glass and the actual IPS LCD underneath. It casts less reflections and glares when you're looking at it. The screen has undeniably held up really well. Now speaking of the software situation, as alluded to, it's currently running on iPadOS 15, official support from Apple ending in 2022. So at this point in time, you can still definitely install most programs from the App Store, but there are just a couple of newer apps and titles, for instance, ChatGPT, maybe coming out in the past year, which will require, say, iPadOS 16. But majority of legacy productivity tools, even games, you can often find fully compatible with iPadOS 15. One reason why you might be considering the iPad Air 2 is, of course, the price. Used and refurbished models can be found for around 60 to 70 bucks when shopping around, depending on your source, falling into the ultra-budget territory, but obviously you're also looking at older hardware as well. It still is, I would say, maybe around 20% more than the iPad Mini 4, which is close to around 50 bucks when you are shopping, so you are paying, again, a little bit more for that bigger battery as well as that larger screen. And though it won't receive active updates going forwards, it's still impressive that Apple supported it for seven OS level updates, which is almost unheard of, especially if comparing to the Android world. Going from iOS 8, again, all the way up to iPad OS 15, a pretty impressive run. The 4x3 aspect ratio screen also makes room for a 1.3 megapixel camera for selfies and video conferencing. It works, but obviously not as high resolution as on newer tablets. Bottom houses the home button that has the integrated fingerprint scanner touch ID sensor, which is relatively quick and also allows you to authenticate when purchasing apps, for example. Overall, bezel sizes, of course, are much thicker than on newer generation tablets, but it doesn't really get in the way of you using the tablet, to be completely honest. It still is pretty lightweight, even by 2023 standards. For a tablet stretching almost 10 inches, again, it's only 6.1 millimeters thick and comes in at under a pound. The very bottom here houses the lightning port for charging, and speaking of charging, this is not the fastest thing in the world. In fact, this large battery will require about four hours to top up from zero. And that is just due to the massive size, larger than any iPhone and even lots of MacBook computers. You also get dual speakers at the bottom, but it doesn't get you quite as much stereo separation as on newer tablets that have maybe one on the top, but that's kind of nitpicking as well. It still serves itself well, offers pretty decent volume output. The very top here housed a power key, and the back here just has a 8 megapixel autofocus camera. It's constructed out of this unibody aluminum alloy that just feels extremely premium to the touch, and then just a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the other corner. A couple of quick reminders, the Air 2 does not support the Apple Pencil or an active stylus since it came out really a generation before the first 
iPad Pro introduced stylus support. You can use a regular passive pen though if you wanted to, but if you are taking notes, for example, then it might serve you better to look at the iPad Pro, even the first gen, if not a newer model yet. It also doesn't support a keyboard case since, again, it's not really a pro version of the iPad, so there's no Pogo contacts on the sides. iPad OS 15 still looks relatively up to date with support for widgets on the home screen. You will notice some moments of hesitation and sluggishness when you're scrolling really quickly through the UI, but for the most part, things are still responsive and usable enough, I would say. You can also swipe down from the top corner to access your quick command center for turning on and off wireless options, screen brightness, there's an ambient light sensor built on it and it also does it automatically, other side for notifications, and of course a dock at the bottom that allows you to use gestures for navigating around, and iPad OS did introduce a very kind of intuitive way of multitasking and also quickly launching into your apps. This taskbar is something that now Android has actually simulated ever since the launch of the Pixel tablet. So this is a design UI element I think Apple did do quite well here. The result is a tablet experience that does feel actually quite well optimized. Plenty of content, taking advantage of split screen views with the larger screen, and being able to multitask a little bit more easily as well as compared to on, say, the Mini, which has a smaller screen, but obviously you have more portability if you're taking it with you and on the road. Now, of course, these days, as apps are just a little bit more intensive on CPU and GPU, it does get a little bit warmer on the top right-hand corner region over here. Checking out some core apps, such as the camera here, again, 8 megapixels, I would say it's more than good enough for scanning and documents, which is honestly all you need for a tablet camera at the end of the day. We'll have our smartphone cameras for mostly everything else. Now jumping into a quick web browsing demo, definitely not the fastest thing in the world anymore, but you can still load up pages without any issues. Even more complex ones can be fully rendered. You just have to wait a few seconds longer. So for instance, here is the Verges page, and you can tell that it just takes a few extra seconds here to buffer, and then everything will snap into focus after a few more seconds. So as long as you're okay with just Waiting a little bit more, it still doesn't really impede the usability, I'd say. The screen still remains really sharp, pinch to zoom still feels quite smooth, and in general, it's still a joy to use for reading back articles. Simple tasks like this don't pose too many issues. The 2 gigabytes of RAM also allows you to do a little bit of multi-tab browsing. In my test, around six tabs, I could still hop back and forth between without too much reloading going on, but anything past that, and it will start to refresh since that number is starting to get a little bit low. Now moving into a quick demo of the speakers and what video playback feels like on the Air 2. Some takeaways being that it does get plenty loud, doesn't sound too tinny either as you're listening to some quick music. Not shabby in terms of quality, it's just a placement on the top here would give you a little bit more separation. But plus you have that headphone jack in addition to Bluetooth that you can connect AirPods to that still works without too many issues. Again, the screen is definitely ahead of its time for a IPS LCD contrast is done very well. And of course a standard 60 hertz refresh rate compared to faster ones found on newer iPads, but still an enjoyable experience for media consumption. Reception quality via dual band Wi-Fi also remains quite strong. And yes, you can also have a cellular version that will work with 4G LTE bands that allows you to connect to the internet when you are severed from Wi-Fi as well. And now moving into the App Store, as alluded to, the majority of content you'll be able to install without too many issues. It's really just content that came out in the past few months, which may require an even newer version of the software to be present since they launched on that version. But for legacy content, as aforementioned, you can often find older versions of the software that will auto-download on the iPad, plus many will still support iPad OS 15 by default. As for the playback experience though, if you are gaming, I would say definitely have your expectations tempered since again, this thing is now approaching a decade old. The fact that for simple usage, it's holding up so well is already kind of a testament to Apple's optimization. So my advice would generally not to be pressing it super hard. If you are playing things like Asphalt or PUBG, yes, you can open it up. You'll have to set the graphics at lowest settings and even then it will take a few minutes to actually load plus may occasionally exit out on you, but it will still be playable. In most cases though, if you're keeping things more onto casual gaming, for instance, Stack, Angry Birds, Subway Surfers, those are the type of content, puzzle games that you are constantly playing, that's gonna still work just fine on this unit. So that is more or less it as far as our revisited look at the iPad Air 2. 
which has held up really well looking back in terms of so many years of software support from Apple. Also using it for comic reading, checking out PDFs can be a good use case as well, as long as you don't need a stylus, and can make do with some slight moments of hesitation here and there. Anything heavier though, in terms of more intensive gaming, you'll definitely be best served by newer options that are more powerful, as well as keep in mind that the app situation, though it still fares pretty well at the moment, certainly won't get better from this point, so a newer model will ensure longer support. But depending on if the price is right, again, some of these can fetch for a really low price point, you're giving it to a child just for those simple tasks like media consumption and web browsing, then there can still be some life yet out of the iPad Air 2. You can learn more details if interested in the links down below, as well as check out our revisited review of the iPad Mini 4 for a comparison. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the iPad Air 2 revisited.